What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Manny here and today we have something massive to talk about. The team over at Black Forest Labs have just dropped Flux 2 and let me tell you this is a serious upgrade. We are looking at a state-of-the-art image diffusion model that pushes the boundaries even further than the original Flux. We're talking better prompt adherence, higher detail and some really interesting new capabilities with reference images. In this video, we're going to break down exactly how to get this running in Comfy UI right now. I'll hand you over to Astra for the technical specs, the download links, and where to put all these new files. Then, she'll show you the basic workflow before handing it back to me so we can put this beast to the test on the rig. Astra, take it away. Thanks, Manny. Hello, everyone. Let's get you set up with Flux 2. To run this model in Comfy UI, you are going to need three specific files. You can find the links to these in the description below or directly on the Comfy UI examples page. First, the text encoder. You need to download the Mistral 3 small flux 2 fp8.safe tensors file. This needs to go into your Comfy UI models text encoders folder. Second, the diffusion model. For most users, we recommend the fp8 mixed version for efficiency. Download fluxx dev fp8 mixed.safe tensors file. Drop this into your Comfy UI Models Diffusion Models folder. If you have the VRAM and want the full-sized uncompressed version, you can grab the fluxx.0dev.safe tensors from the official repo, but the FP8 version is excellent for getting started. Third, the VAE. You'll need the fluxx2-vae.safe tensors file. This goes into your Comfy UI Models VAE folder. Now, let's look at the workflow. The standard workflow provided by Comfy Anonymous is quite powerful. You can simply drag the example image from the Flux2 page directly into your Comfy UI window to load it. A key feature here is that Flux2 supports multiple reference images as optional inputs. The default workflow actually has nodes for two reference images set up, but bypassed by default. You can enable these or even add more to guide the generation style or composition. Manny has already been experimenting with this and has built a custom, optimized version of this workflow. It's cleaner, organized, and ready for advanced testing. You can grab that updated workflow right now on our Patreon or the Codebreakers website. Links are in the description. I'll hand it back to Manny now to show you exactly how this looks in action. Over to you, Manny. Astra, over and out. Cheers, Astra. All right, guys, let's dive in. So I've got Comfy UI open. I'm going to load up the workflow Astra just mentioned. First things first, let's make sure our checkpoints are loaded correctly. Here in the Diffusion Models loader, I'm selecting the Flux2 dev fp8 mixed file. For the clip text encoder, we are selecting the Mistral3 file and obviously ensuring the Flux2 VAE is selected in the VAE loader here. Let's test this out with a prompt to see how it handles the new architecture. Let's go with a cyberpunk, street food vendor, neon lights, rain on pavement, highly detailed cinematic lighting. Hitting Q, let's see how the 5090 handles this. So this workflow is both a text to image workflow and an image to image workflow. If you unbypass the reference latent node, it becomes an image to image workflow. Remember the first generation takes the longest as the models need to load into the VRAM. Subsequent generations should be a lot quicker. So that took 120 seconds which is roughly about two minutes it took for that first generation also the first generation here is 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels and as you can see it's quite a good image for that size and let's look at this image I'll zoom in so you can see the details it's actually fantastic so let's try the next prompt and for this I'm going to use a JSON format prompt so I will use an LLM to help me create the prompt. I'll just drop this into the prompt box and the prompt here is a hyper realistic cinematic close-up of a futuristic female engineer. We'll cue the prompt and bam we have our image and considering this is a 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels it's amazing. I think there's a bit less of the plastic AI look but it's still there but the details have definitely improved. The metal overlays on her face looks a bit plastered on. And surprisingly, the second generation took a bit longer than the first generation at 130 seconds. But let's prompt it again and see what else we come up with. And stick about because we're going to do some reference images testing afterwards. But let's first work with the text to image. So the next prompt is, 
a macro photograph of a vintage incandescent light bulb. Inside the glass bulb, instead of a filament, there is a miniature hyper-realistic ecosystem. Let's see what happens. Let's run the workflow. So the first thing to notice is the prompt adherence. That's amazing. It's actually produced a fantastic image based on the prompt. This JSON prompt format works very well. And again, surprisingly, this image took even longer than the previous two images, coming in at a whopping 145 seconds on a 5090. I'm using 20 steps, and maybe if I have a look around, I can probably tweak it. Let's try another prompt. A majestic close-up portrait of a white Bengal tiger wearing ornate, battle-worn silver samurai armor. And again, let's run the prompt and see how the model performs. I will let you judge the images because um, it's a bit subjective. Part of the problem with why the generations are taking so long is to do with my screen recording. Even though the screen capture software OBS is running on the second GPU, it's somehow affecting how the model behaves. So if I shut down the OBS, it takes longer. And counterintuitively, if I run the OBS software, it runs quicker. And I will demonstrate that on this next prompt. So the next prompt is a moody, rainy night scene in Tokyo, a wet window pane with rain droplets running down. Through the window, a bright pink and blue neon sign glows intensely with the text Bengal Nights. Let's cue the workflow and see how that goes. And I'll keep the OBS running this time so you can see in real time, I'll capture the entire generation. And so once this comes through, this will be the last text to image generation. We'll move on to the reference images. So as we saw earlier with the code breakers embroidery, the text features inside the new Flux model is working a lot better than the old model. Well, the old model didn't work at all. So now we have text in image editing within Flux, which is a big feature and a huge step up. So let's see how it does with this neon light. And as you can see, it's absolutely hammered this. The neon lights behind the glass with the water droplets, it's fantastic. It's absolutely amazing. There's no doubt that the model is handling the text and the prompts with amazing accuracy. And also this generation took only 68 seconds and I was recording the screen continuously. It's a bit counterintuitive, I'm not sure why. So even when I'm not recording the screen, the OBS software is taking up resources in the background because it is running, it's just not recording. And it's supposed to be running on the second GPU. Okay, let's move on to reference images. First thing, to load in any images, we have to enable the reference latent node. That enables the model to see your images. And next, we're going to load in an image. And I'm going to load in an image of this car. And also, we'll combine it with another image of this woman. And she's leaning against the wall. I'm going to write a prompt. And let's keep it simple. I'm going to write, the car is parked in the alleyway in image two. Let's just run it and see what happens. And I made a mistake here that some of you may have already noticed, but if you haven't, it's going to become apparent in a minute. I didn't enable the second reference latent node, which means the model can't really see the second image. And as you will see, this model still produces an output and it's quite a good output and it shows great prompt adherence. But I will rerun the workflow with the reference latent node enabled and let's see what happens. Now on this one you will see there was another mistake that I made. So the input images are landscape aspect but the model is set to generate 1024 square. So as you will see the model produces an output that is kind of squashed amongst other things. So I'll rerun the generation with a 1280 by 720 aspect ratio and that produces a better output but I still wouldn't say it's 100% the car is a bit squashed in there and I wanted it head on so I will change the prompt and try again and that's what it's about sometimes tweaking the prompt or tweaking your aspects to try to get a good image so I asked for a head-on view and I got one but the girl is missing so what can I do I went back in and I changed the prompt again added the girl leaning on the vehicle and then lo and behold, finally we got somewhere. I think this image is okay. I mean, you could carry on prompting all night. But you guys tell me what you think. I think the model is absolutely blinding. And we'll do one final test and I've got this one final nugget for you guys. We load up this image of Tom Hanks and I've got this uh, image of my neighbor. 
and I'm going to provide a JSON prompt for this. And the prompt is to combine these two characters on a red carpet. You can pause and read the prompt if you want. Let's run the model and see what it does. As you will see, the model does quite well. It seems to focus more on the prompt. So the prompt is a very powerful thing here. The influence from the images aren't as strong. Let's try to fix that. I'm going to change the prompt to try to use the images themselves. We're going to try to place the girl in image 2 into image 1. And I'm just going to manually doctor this prompt so it all sounds good. And then I'll run the model. So while that runs, I want to point out one thing. Look at the VRAM usage. I've been monitoring the performance of the metrics while we run these tests. And honestly, something doesn't add up in a good way. So we are running a massive 32 billion parameter model here. On paper, this thing should be eating my 5090 alive and asking for seconds. But it's not. It's running surprisingly cool. And here's Astro with an explanation of why that might be. That is the fascinating part. While the specifications suggest a massive 32 billion parameter model, the memory behavior suggests something much smarter is happening under the hood. The prevailing theory is that the model is utilized a technique known as active parameters, specifically within the new text encoder. Instead of activating the entire neural network for every single generation, the model effectively identifies and activates only the specific parameters required for your prompt. Think of it like looking up a topic in an encyclopedia. You do not need to read every single volume to find information on a car. You only open the volume relevant to vehicles. Flux2 seems to be doing exactly that, keeping the unnecessary data dormant and only firing up the neurons it actually needs. This is why you are seeing those lower temperatures and why it is not maxing out the VRAM on your 5090. Thanks, Astra. And look at this, Tom Hanks with the girl. Everything looks fantastic. This model is a beast. It is a behemoth. Character consistency is spot on. It's important to prompt correctly. Guys, I hope this has been an interesting video. Please like, share and subscribe. Hit that notification and catch me on the Discord. Links in the description. Get down there and I shall see you. Have a great day.